Hello and welcome to this edition of Phi TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson, and we are here just a few blocks from Florida's capital during this pandemic called COVID-19. It's affecting Florida's economy. And today I'm joined by William Large, uh, president and CEO or executive director of Florida Justice Reform Institute. And you are chairing uh, the Reset Task Force Legal Reform and Liability Protections Working Group. Did I get that right? Yes, you did, Brad. Okay. Thanks a lot for having right. me. All I right. appreciate All it. Right. Yeah, we're really happy to have you on uh, Phi TV. So tell us, um, tell us about um, your serving as the chair of the Reset uh, Task Force. Tell us about your role. What do you do in there? Well, right now, uh, several businesses and business associations are looking at liability protections with respect to COVID-19 lawsuits. Mm -hmm. There are over 2,500 COVID-19 lawsuits across the country, and there's several hundred in Florida. So we want businesses to open up again in Florida, and one of the ways to encourage that is to make sure that they have some type of immunity or a safe harbor from COVID-19 type lawsuits. Right. So we're studying what's happening in Washington, D.C. We've studied what's happened already in several other states. Example, we've pulled the legislation from Wyoming, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Utah, and a bunch of other states and have examined what they've done. And we're trying to work with all the stakeholders, the legislators to create a product that will help businesses reopen in Florida. And of course the difference, the only reason those states have passed legislation is because their legislatures are in and ours doesn't come in until next year. So so the, the task force is gonna make these recommendations to the governor. Business liability is so key and in Florida, and I'm just gonna give you a little commercial, you have been fighting against what, what we call is that, that Florida trial bar system that seeks to just literally empty the pockets of, of businesses every day, hardworking folks that, you know, Sarah's Coffee Shop, and you've been on the front lines of that fight. Now we have this new challenge for regular businesses to open, and really, are, are, are you seeing the the, uh, the Florida, you know, justice you know, reform group, those trial lawyers, gearing up to do class actions against Florida businesses? Are you seeing that kind of, 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 of you know, Opportun opportunism, if you will, by the other side. Are, are you seeing that? Well, we're seeing a lot of commercials on TV on that subject. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of lawsuits in Florida about a lot of different subjects. Some of them about business interruption insurance, mm -hmm. some lawsuits about uh, employees not wanting to return to work and wanting accommodations. Many lawsuits against the nursing home industry, the yeah. cruise lines, again, about exposure to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a whole host of lawsuits on this subject yeah. out there. Yeah, it's it's crazy to see, and it's it's just sad that that some people look at it as, as a as a money raising opportunity for their 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 side of the legal industry. Let's talk about the justice system for a second. How has the justice system changed during COVID nineteen? Just give us some real world examples. Preparing jury trials in the wake of COVID nineteen. How this used to be a big in person kind of thing. So how are they changing? Yeah, it's very interesting. The uh, Florida Supreme Court, through the leadership of Chief Justice Kennedy, has created a series of rules that have really changed how hearings and trials are being done. Mm -hmm. We just had our first civil trial via video in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. And a lot of our circuit judges, and those are our trial judges in Florida, they're having Zoom type meetings all the time, which is very unique because practitioners, for example, in a local area used to be the only attorney that could go in front of that judge. Right. But now with Zoom type hearings, attorneys from Pensacola or Miami can have a hearing in Orlando. And so it's really changed the practice. And I think it's gonna be a long-term thing. A lot of these things are probably going to be adopted permanently yeah. in the future. And it's fascinating because you know the judicial system has for a long time been able to arraign people in prison remotely through video, but now they're conducting their trials through this video and internet connectivity. It's fascinating. Okay, so, so you talked about the liability in your working group, but in the last 30 seconds, give me the snapshot on, on how you see um, Florida moving forward with with how does how does Florida win in its in its reset efforts um, with the, these liability ideas that you guys are working on? 
I think we need to focus on some key areas that have passed in some other states. One would be a, a heightened evidentiary standard mm -hmm. in terms of evidence, like clear and convincing if you're going to try and say someone was exposed to COVID-19. It's got to be a higher burden. There also needs to be a higher culpability standard for businesses, mm -hmm. like a willful or wanton standard. Um, likewise, there needs to be a shortened statute of limitations right. for any type of COVID-19 claims. And there needs to be immunity for essential workers who responded during this crisis. Right. Those are kind of the big four issues that people are talking about. There's some other issues out there, but that's what we're seeing passed in the other states. Yeah. And we're seeing that talked about in Congress. So I expect those issues to be highlighted during a legislative session on this issue. Well, we know you and the rest of the uh, chairs of the other Reset Task Force ha have some more work to do. We, uh, we we were fortunate. We know Ed Moore, who's the executive director of that effort, um, has to then compile it all so that they, they can put forth their recommendations to the governor and the rest of the leadership in Florida. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, with, a with FIT what um, everybody on your committee is working on. We appreciate you. Well, thanks for having me, Brad. I yeah. appreciate it. It's our pleasure. We love having you on, William, as always, and thanks for all that you do for FJRI. We're just uh, really appreciative of the work that you do over there. Yeah, you, you got it. That's all the time we have for this episode of Phi TV. On behalf of the over 130,000 people and all of our corporate members that work every day to bring you your internet and television experience, thanks for tuning in.